Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be about SSDs. I'm going to take this notebook and, oh, please tell me that. Okay, good. It didn't go into sleep this time, and I'm going to go like this with it, which is not recommended. Never, ever do this with your notebook. Shake it around like this, because if you have a hard drive in your notebook, you probably just broke it. They're extremely fragile pieces of technology, which SSDs are not. So this episode is gonna be about Intel SSDs, their product mix, the performance that they're able to deliver, as well as the reliability and durability that Intel has achieved. Yes, today's episode is going to be about the benefits of SSD in general with a particular emphasis on Intel SSDs. So today we've got a couple of demos including a 510 SSD over here and a 510 series that is an Elmcrest SSD over here. But what you saw already was only the tip of the iceberg. So yes, SSDs are more durable in the sense that they are less fragile and less likely to break, but they also have some other advantages over hard drives too. They are significantly lower in terms of their power consumption. They are quieter. They produce less heat, which is a factor if you have a laptop, for example. And obviously, there is the performance factor. You always have to weigh capacity into the equation. However, with the recent hard drive shortage due to the flooding in Thailand, it's become even less of an issue. Now, today we've got Intel's 510 series SSD actually on demo. We're going to show it absolutely destroying a high-end hard drive in terms of performance, but they've got a full product mix that includes some mainstream stuff as well. So we'll take a look at the SATA 3 6 gigabit per second drive. So these are more of an enthusiast class of product. It's available in only a couple capacities, 120 gig and 250 gig, and absolutely huge sequential reads and write speeds, up to 500 megs reads off a single drive on the 510 series 250 gig SSD. However, when you're shopping for an SSD, that's not the only spec that's important. The random 4K reads and writes are also a factor. So what that means is that when you're multitasking, when you're doing many small things at once, you're going to get much quicker responsiveness from your system if you have very good random 4K reads and writes. So make sure you watch for that when you're shopping for an SSD. Now, on their 320 series, which is more mainstream, this is SATA 2 drives. You've got capacities all the way from 40 gig to 600 gigs. And you're going to see a phenomenon here that we saw on the 510 series, but is even more pronounced. The higher capacity you go, the better the performance you get. So you find a sweet spot somewhere in the 80 gig to 160 gig range where you don't get much more for going past it, but you do also have to pay a significant premium to get a higher capacity drive. So how much performance do you get with an SSD versus a hard drive? If we're talking mobile hard drives, which are the ones that look like this, unless it's a hybrid drive, you get a whole lot of performance against those. So SSDs are a great upgrade for a laptop. If we're talking against desktop drives, guess what? In spite of the small form factor of an SSD, it will still absolutely demolish any hard drive. So this is a WD 2 terabyte Black Edition drive. It's a high performance 7200 RPM drive. And in PC Mark, in the hard drive suite, we actually score literally four times higher with the SSD. How does that translate into real world performance? It does. For example, with an SSD, it's not about the boot time in terms of when you see the desktop on an SSD versus a hard drive. An SSD versus a hard drive is the difference between seeing the desktop and waiting another minute while things load in the taskbar and the system becomes responsive to instantly being able to click on whatever you want and open up a bunch of apps as quickly as you can actually even click on them. So let's talk about Intel versus their competition. What's the advantage? What's the disadvantage? Because we have to talk about that as well. The reality of it is there's probably more than I can count on my fingers and toes companies out there marketing and trying to sell SSDs. So why would you go with an Intel drive? The reality of it is Intel is one of the largest companies in the world. They have the engineering resources to throw at it. However, what you'll notice about Intel drives is that they actually are not necessarily the highest capacity or the highest performance drives on the market. So why is that? Intel takes a very, very conservative approach to their drives. For example, in their 510 series, they are still using 38 nanometer flash, which is, uh, would be considered last generation flash technology at this point in time. Why are they doing that? Because they know it works. So while Intel may not be the fastest at a given price point or the, fat or the highest capacity at a given price point, they are the most reliable. This comes not only from their claims, which they do of course claim, 
but it also comes from the NCIX data. Now, as a general rule, NCIX doesn't talk about the RMA rates directly of various components, but I will tell you guys right now that the Intel RMA return rate on their SSDs is lower than any other SSD manufacturer. And if something does go wrong, you're backed by Intel's legendary warranty service. You got that coverage for three years. Now we covered pretty much the whole Intel product stack in this video, but there's a couple more things that I want to talk about. Some scenarios other than the laptop one we talked about and the desktop one we've talked about where you're using the SSD as a dedicated boot drive and you're storing all your files on it because the reality of it is that can get very expensive very quickly. A 250 gig plus SSD, which is what I would consider to be a minimum for installing a great variety of applications is very expensive. So yes, that's why I had this box here the whole time. This is a box from a Z68 motherboard. So Intel allows you to use any of their lower capacity drives as a cache for something like this two terabyte black hard drive that is a high performance drive. Well, now you can go ahead and you can kind of strap an SSD to it, much like a Seagate Momentus XT, but you can mix your match, your own drive and SSD, as long as you have a Z68 chipset board. Intel even has a special SSD that's 20 gig that uses SLC flash in order in order to maintain uh, more longevity, even more longevity than the already reliable Intel SSDs because SLC flash can be written to far more times than MLC flash, which is used on almost every consumer SSD today. So thank you for checking out this NCIX Tech Tips episode on the Intel SSD lineup. And don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos from your favorite online e-tailer, NCIX.com.